Hey everyone, well in case you're wondering, this is a take two. That's because I got a phone call in the middle, and I didn't know a phone call would kill my tablet, but it did. I'm learning about technology on a regular basis. So, in this essay, oh, excuse me. So, in this video, we are going to be doing this stuff, survey results to-do list upcoming assignments. And right here, this is something from Dr. Barrios. It's uh, some links that go to the ebook version of Emerging that's now available. Um, I've already put these links on Canvas. So if you go to the homepage, scroll down to where it says Wednesday, and then, ta-da, there you go. You can click on those links and it'll, it'll make it available to you. Also, I'm going to be uploading this to Canvas, and so you'll be able to click on the links here and it'll take you out. All right, um, next, uh, this is what's in this video. Uh, this video is going to cover the following, following uh, survey results, some key questions some people asked, um, a priority to-do list, upcoming assignments, the proposal, um, the annotated bibliography, and Friday. Okay, and most importantly, um, happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm wearing nice green. It's kind of funny. It kind of sucked, actually. We had an activity pre-planned last month for everybody in the all the graduate students to go out and go to a local bar called the Irishman. I don't know if you guys are uh, familiar with it. It's actually a really crappy Irish bar. I mean, I've been to good Irish bars. This is a crappy one, but it's near campus and it's actually a fun place. I like it. So here we go. Uh, so partial survey results. Now, when you're looking at this, when you see that green bar across the top, that's not the correct answer. It's just Canvas is stupid. It's kind of dumb. Um, it's just whatever Canvas does. But uh, in a six-part essay, the thesis sentence does not go in the div in the introduction. It goes in the divisio. Let me explain divisio. Divisio, or in current English, is called division. Division. So basically, what's happening in the divisio is that it is the dividing line between the introduction and all the other crap that comes. So it's the confirmatio, the reprehensio, and the and the peer ratio all comes after the divisio. Okay, it's the dividing line. So three things it's supposed to be impactful, powerful, tight, three sentences, your thesis, your mapping, and a smooth transition right into the rest of it. It's the most logical place for a thesis sentence. However, <laughs> this Little background information. So back in the day, 1970s, for some reason, they decided high school students shouldn't be studying the, this type of essay anymore. The, no more doing the four point essays, no more doing the six point essays. They wanted you guys to learn, high school students to learn how to do three point essays. And the reason being is they didn't think uh, students in the 1970s were smart enough to write a good six point essay. So they created the three point essay um, it, whatever, it's stupid, it's dumb. High school students are smart enough to do a six-part essay. You guys are smart enough to do a six-part essay. Now, when I was a high school student, I could have written it no problem. I just couldn't have spelled it properly. I was a horrible speller. Great at math, great at science, sucked at spelling. So the correct answer here, in a six-part essay, where does the thesis go? It goes in the divisio or partition or the division. Remember? Division. <laughs> All the good information right at the end, draws a hard line, then you go into the confirmation. All right. So all you guys who are going like, why do I have to restate my thesis in the narration part two when I've already done it in the introduction? You don't. You only do it in the one place. All right. Next, ethos. Ethos is, one of the, is a really key aspect of um, rhetoric that you guys now are required to practice. Is you have to establish your credibility and you have to deliberately use it as a form of rhetoric. So look up what ethos is, what you have to do with it, and make sure you're doing it. And ethos in a six-part essay goes in the exordium, the narratio, the divisio, and a little in the preratio. And there you go. By the way, I spell preratio wrong all the time. Like I said, I'm a bad speller. But it is, it's not a common word used in American English. The Brits use it a little bit more than we do. And people in India use it all the time, but it means conclusion. So if you ever see it in a book or something, that's what it means. All right, pathos. You are required to use pathos. Um, 
Now, you use it just a little bit in the introduction, but the biggest place to use uh, pathos is in the pair ratio. Um, and the reason is that's where you are going to use emotion and, um, and emotionally charged logic to grab your reader and say, this is why we did all this hard work. This is why we wrote this paper. This is why we have to continue researching and studying these problems. Okay. So what about logos? Logos is logic. So rhetorical forms like logos and doxa are best deployed in the confirmatio and the reprehensio. And so support paragraphs and counter arguments. So that's where those go. So keep emotion, a bias, and political beliefs out of the confirmatio and reprehensio. You cannot tell me if you like or dislike or disagree or anything um, with these. And by the way, if you're doing the Coates essay again, if you're re uh, revising that, then you cannot tell me anyways whether you agree or disagree with Coates. With Aurora, you can tell me you disagree with Aurora, but you can't, you know, show emotion or bias in those support paragraphs anymore. You have to be cold, logical, and factual. Even though most of you guys are very young, vibrant, loving people. Whatever that means. Yeah. Hook. Please don't. I hate them. However... How does Aaron feel about using a hook in the beginning of a paper? If you see right there on the survey, it, should, it gives you four different options. And the one that's green is the one that's absolutely wrong. The rest are actually correct. Uh, I don't recommend it. I hate them. Uh, but uh, so next one, I hate them. I do. It's actually not just me. It's the whole FAU writing program. And the reason being is in high school, they hammered it so hard into you guys to have a good hook that it's a liability and we hate them. We, I mean, Dr. Hinshaw and Dr. Barrios has specifically have instructed us to cure you of your need of writing hooks. So there we go. So in a six part essay, uh, he feels you should avoid it. I do feel that way. Um, but in a six part essay, I think if you are going to use a hook, just use that a little bit, no more than one sentence and maybe only a little bit in that one sentence. Let your subject matter be the hook. So where does the research go? This table is designed to show you where the research goes. Uh, it's kind of a short table. Uh, so in the exordium, no research at all. You only have four sentences that go there. Three or four, okay? And so in three to four sentences, you do two things, okay? The two things you do is you show your subject matter. So your subject matter, um, if you're going to do Aurora, you actually are supposed to be focusing on one of Aurora's uh, philosophical points. So you're going to show that you're talking about either, uh, what was it, libertarianism, meritocracy, or eg egalitarianism. Egalitarianism. Well, I hate that word. Egalitarianism. Okay. Uh, so no research there. In the narratio, narratio is the place. If you want to talk a place that says, please put your research here, this is it. This is where you put your research. Now, in this paper, your, your narration is only going to be one or two uh, paragraphs. And double quote paragraphs would be brilliant here. Um, so this is where you do it. Okay, this is where the bulk of your really good, because you're going to take your core subject and you're going to narrow it down. So you're going to show, so if you're doing Aurora and you want to focus on meritocracy, then what you do is you go look up meritocracy through Gale, find out what it's about, and then have sources to talk about meritocracy so that you can discuss it. Or if you're going to talk about egalitarianism, make sure that's what you've researched and that's in your narration. Okay. And if you're doing coats, you just do that one aspect. You discuss the problems either in the schools, the problems with the streets, the problems with the religion, and you do, or you can discuss his mother. But you can't do all four in your paper. One of those. Research what the hell he's talking about with those. Okay. So divisio. No research in the divisio. No quotes in the divisio. Three things. Okay, that's it. What are those? Thesis, mapping, transition. Remember, it's that hard division. Confirmation. Okay. Um, and this is not a good place for research materials. This is actually where you're focusing on uh, the primary text. So if you were at my undergraduate school, this would all be research materials. But because of the way that we do this here at FAU, which is a system I agree with, you're focusing on your primary text. So Aurora or Coates or Cohen and Dobbs. Okay. Uh, you can have a little bit of research here, but only a little bit in order to help guide the quote. 
So a little bit maybe in the context, but nothing in the analysis. Okay, so reprehensio, yes, this is a great place to do research, uh, to include outside research. Those are those outside uh, contradictory voices that are going to contradict what you're saying. Now keep in mind, uh, Aurora contradicts himself like a mad dog. Coates contradicts himself, not as clearly, but he does. It's brilliant. Some of you guys have caught on. Cohen contradicts himself like it's going out of style, and Das is, as an artist, is just filled with contradictions, and so it's okay. Pure ratio, no research in the pure ratio at all, period. So what is the role of research in this assignment? It is, you know, so in this class, you need to examine your primary text the closest. Um, half of your paper has to be focused on them. Uh, your research is supposed to only add contest and contrast to your primary text, but you never use research to outshine or replace your primary text. So some of you guys in your first paper, the Aurora paper, you guys actually did very little Aurora and loads of outside research. It's the opposite. You need to switch that. So at most, if you have six quotes from the primary text, you only need three research quotes, okay? And one of those should be pretty minor to use as context. And then while the source is in the annotated bibliography then, uh, when you research, uh, you should always over-research a topic to make sure you are making the best choices and to make sure you actually understand the subject. So am I making you do a little busy work? It's, I did the busy work. Um, so there we go. All right. It's Tuesday. So what should I be working on right now? Okay. Here's a priority list you need to be focused on. Number one, get watch that annotated bibliography video. Number two, start your annotated bibliography. Number three, read elements of ENC 1101 and 1102, pages uh, 101 through 104. 104 is the key one. It's got good questions. Read those questions. Number four, uh, point four here, reread your paper. The next five, reread the rubric I graded you with. Six, reread the original prompt. Seven, reread the graded paper I scored. And eight, reread the primary text. Know the primary text. Okay. Oops. And then here are the assignments that are coming up. So on Wednesday, that's when the proposal is due. That's an easy assignment. We'll discuss that in just a moment. Uh, revision, annotated bibliography, which is the most time-consuming assignment, which is why I sent out the video as soon as I could, is due on Friday. The double entry journal is due on Monday. That's the most useful assignment. I'll be, te I'll be making a video about that. A couple of you guys who've had me last semester already know how to do the basics of it. However, um, I've changed the approach. So be careful, don't jump the gun. Uh, re uh, revision confirmatio online outline. You're gonna do all your confirmatio. So three and a half pages worth of outline where you're doing, I don't care how many paragraphs you know, four, five, six, I don't care, seven, eight, nine, ten, I don't care how many paragraphs you're going to use, I need those outlined. Um, then the full outline on Friday next week, and then the rough draft on Monday, and guess what, we're going to be doing peer reviews, it looks like, because I don't think we're ever going to be able to meet in person again, especially now that I think one FAU student has been confirmed to have the coronavirus and then because half of you other guys were doing the boogaloo over at the uh, the Fort Lauderdale Beach, some of you guys were doing the electric slide, maybe you guys were doing the hustle, who knows, you're out there on the beach doing the disco and the school, the state is like, what the fuck? So there we go. Uh, proposal, don't worry about it. I would have gone to the beach. I, I, I almost went to the beach anyways, but not the one in Fort Lauderdale. I'm too old for that beach. All right, the proposal due tomorrow at 11.55 p.m. It's really easy. The first part of this assignment is to look over the essay you want to revise, my line edits, and the problems I revealed through the rubric for that essay. The primary text your article was about, and the article, three types of revision found in elements of ENC 1101 and 1102 on pages 101 through 104, also found in the files here on Canvas. After reading everything, write a three-paragraph proposal to me exp examining how you are going to revise 60 to 80% of your essay. Use the questions on page 104 as inspiration. You don't have to outline those questions, just use them as guidance. Okay, what I expect MLA, this paper must conform to the MLA standards you know I expect, including a work cited page. Three paragraphs. This uh, short three paragraph paper is meant to be a proposal for your paper. Do not expect me to approve your proposal. Um, if you write a crap proposal, I will reject and tell you, go write this again and then come back to me. 
So, if, yeah. If I think you're not taking this seriously, I'll tell you sorry. Okay, if I do not like what you're planning on doing, then I'll reject your proposal and require that you rework your ideas. Grace period, you have until May 7th, but do not fart around. You cannot write your revision without this, doing this first. If you take this seriously, it won't be hard. So annotate a bit. So that's it. That's the explanation for doing the proposal. It's really easy. It's not a hard assignment. Be serious. Take the time to examine what you're doing. So annotated bibliography. Hi, everyone. This is the assignment. Uh, this assignment is called an annotated bibliography. The Cornell University Library claims an annotated bibliography is a list of citations to books, articles, and documents. Each citation is followed by a brief, usually about 150 words, descriptive and evaluative paragraph, the annotation. The purpose of the annotation is to inform the reader of the rele uh, relevance, accuracy, and quality of the sources cited. So there we go. There's that quote. For this assignment, I made another YouTube video, and you can find the link here. Ba bam Okay. You should have watched it already. And then this assignment is part of the core assi uh, assignments written by the First Year Composition Committee and Dr. Wendy Hinshaw in particular. So I didn't write it. They did. However, I made the guys last semester do it too, and it wasn't required. And the reason I did it, because it is an incredibly handy, helpful research tool. Um, what I expect, oh, and please watch that video. If you haven't watched it yet, go watch that stupid video. What I expect, MLA. This includes page numbers. However, there are other aspects of MLA that are different in this assignment. There is a required name, assignment name, and no work cited page. The video has the details. So that's how I know if you watch the video or not, because you'll screw that part up. Six annotations. Each of your annotations must be 150 words long and have uh, specific details that must be met. However, uh, some of you guys might be doing seven annotations. You guys know who you are. If you watch the video, you'll know what I'm talking about. And then specialized formatting. Annotated bibliographies will not are not formatted like other documents. Pay attention to detail on this portion of the assignment. Uh, and then there's the work cited. You can go directly to the quote there, to the background information on annotated bibliography from Cornell University. And then why did I push the annotated bibliography video first? Simple, it is the assignment that will take the longest to do other than the rough draft and final revision draft. It will take the longest. But the proposal is going to prove to me that you are one, taking this assignment seriously and two, that you actually have a vision for your revision. Think of the image the comic introduced. And then Friday, there will only be one video on Friday because I want you to focus on your annotated bibliography. This video will be to will be to explain what is going on with the double entry journal. For research and honestly, any paper writing a double entry journal is an incredibly useful tool, and I regret not and I regret not making sure you guys have a thorough database of quotes. Next semester, I'm going to make sure everybody has one. Uh, there will not be a live stream on Friday. But get ready for a chat option to uh, to open so I can chat with those of you who have concerns. And I think on Monday, we're probably going to do our very first live session. And it'll just be Q&A. That's it. But I'll take roll. Make sure you're there. We'll set up the details. And so what was in this video? There you go. Survey results. Some key questions you asked, a priority to-do list, upcoming assignments, the proposal, the annotated bibliography, and what's going on on Friday. And uh, that's it. That's the last of this video. Nothing in here is really hard. This is actually a really uh, simple video. However, it should give you some good background information. Um, of all the videos that I've done so far, the most important one is the annotated bibliography. Please take that seriously. That's an important assignment. Um, watch it. You guys have already done a lot of very similar work to it already. When you've done, been doing those reading responses, those reading responses are incredibly similar to what you have to turn in for the annotated bibliography. It shouldn't take too long to say, oh, I get it. I can do this already. I've had practice. I've written four of them. So there you go. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for sitting through another one of these videos. I do appreciate it. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving. Blah. Happy things. Patrick's Day. I'm now going to go watch my handy-dandy video on YouTube from the uh, uh, Dropkick Murphys. And uh, you guys have a very, very pleasant evening. Good luck. Have any questions, send me an email. I've already answered tons of emails, and I'll answer more. 
See you later. Bye.